Welcome again, and in this session, we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 5. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about how Jesus healed a demon-possessed man. And we're talking about a man who had evil spirits living in him. Also, Jesus raises a dead girl from the dead. Um, and also, uh, Jesus heals a sick woman. Let's get right into this. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. They came to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. When he had come out of the boat, immediately a man with an unclean spirit met him out of, out of the tombs. He lived in the tombs. Nobody could bind him anymore. Nobody could, could arrest him, tie him up, tie him down, do anything with him. Not even the chains, it says. Because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been torn apart from him by him and the fetters broken in pieces nobody had the strength to tame him verse 5 always night and day in the tombs and in the mountains he was crying out and cutting himself with stones being being overly obsessed with the dead and cutting yourself and mutilating yourself is not a good sign ladies and gentlemen verse 6 when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and bowed down to him. See, oh, this evil spirits, they, they look like they're, uh, I mean, they, they can, I mean, if this guy was in a church bowing down to Jesus, they would say, oh, that's good, that's good. How would you say he has evil spirits? He's worshiping Jesus. The evil spirits don't worship Jesus, do they? Yes. Yes, 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 they bow down to Jesus. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What do I have to do with you, Yeshua, you son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, don't torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Oh, why would Jesus torment any, anybody, anything? He does. And he will. By the way, Jesus is the light in anything of darkness or evil. Just don't get along with him. Verse 9. He asked him, what is your name? Jesus said to this man, what is your name? Actually, he's speaking to the spirits in him. He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him, much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now on the mountainside, there was a great herd of pigs feeding. All the demons begged him, saying, send us into the pigs that we may, that we may enter into them. At once, Jesus gave them permission. Why did Jesus do that? Oh, those poor pigs, aren't they the... the 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 creation of God. Oh, those cute little pigs. Why would Jesus, why would Jesus do that? Send all these unclean spirits into all this herd of pigs. See what you got to understand, my friend. How the thing, how, how does, again, how does the kingdom of God work? You see, the evil spirits look for legal ground. How did they e even enter the man? The man did something against the, the law of God, against the instructions of God, that gave the evil spirits legal right into that man. You do something unclean, you do something wrong, you disobey God, you open the door to an evil spirit or evil spirits actually coming into your life and afflicting you and causing you much harm. This man must have done something. We don't know exactly what it was. However, the, the evil spirits know the process. They know the, pro, the protocol. They know how it works. If, if someone does if, you know, an unclean thing, that's where we belong. Send us into the pigs. We know that the scriptures say that the that pigs are unclean. Okay? That's why... People are not supposed to behave like pigs, okay? And other unclean animals, by the way. Send us into the pigs. Why did they why did they say why didn't they say the birds of the air? Why didn't they say into some tree or something like that? Why? Because they knew the law of God. 
They knew what God says about pigs, that they are unclean. And they knew that pigs were fair game. Another reason why you should be careful what you eat. A lot of the really horrible diseases that have you know, struck mankind in the past little while came through unclean animals, yes? Mm-hmm. Think about it. Think about Make a list of all the huge you know, plagues or diseases and viruses that have, that have you know, went through the earth. And even in recent times, a lot of them came from unclean animals. Satan still operates this way. God still operates by his law. Unclean animals can have unclean spirits. You eat that or you do unclean things according to what God is calls unclean, unholy, you disobey Him, you open the door for evil spirits to come into your life. Why is it that so many people, why is it that, you know, they say smoking causes cancer? Smoking is an unclean thing. You open the door for this kind of stuff to come into your life. Okay? And why is it this? Why is it this Torah says don't, don't you know mess around with you know witchcraft and all these other spiritual kind of so-called you know spiritual things that the, that that the law of God forbids? Why does God forbid you to do that? Because He knows that that opens the door to evil spirits into your life, and He doesn't want you to have evil spirits afflicting you. So many people today are, have evil spirits. Trust me, they do. Verse 13, at once Jesus gave them permission. Je- Jesus did not think twice about it. He knew. The, he, know, he knows how it goes. He knows how the court of the Lord works. He knows how co- God's court actually works. You want this land over here? You have legal right to it. Because of this, 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 this. That's how it works. You want to inhabit this man? You want to inflict this man? You want to put disease or sickness upon this person, that person, that person? That's the way it works. The unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. And the whole and the herd, about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and they were drowned in the sea. Suicide is evil. This is, a, this is a sign that suicide is a result of evil spirits. Verse 14, those who fed the pigs or those who fed the pigs fled. And let's get out of here, boys. <laughs> and told it in the city and in the country. The people came to see. What it was that had happened, they came to to Yeshua and saw him who had been possessed by the demons, by demons, sitting, clothed. Okay, so before he was naked. So you go around naked a lot, man, you you got some evil stuff going on. So he saw the, the man who was possessed by demons sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Even him who had the legion. Legion would be a lot. Uh, um, uh, thousands, or th- at least a thousand, uh, and they were afraid. They were afraid because it was such a uh, such a powerful thing that it's such a powerful miracle. Because they knew that this man could not be helped or bound or uh, you know whatever, he could not be locked up at all. This was a very vicious, very strong man. Now he's sitting there, clothed. And in his right mind, not going around naked, cutting himself like he used to by the control of demons. They began to beg him to, excuse me, verse 16, those who, those who saw it declared to them what had happened to him who was possessed by demons and about the pigs. They, they began to beg him, that's Jesus, to depart from their region. That's how powerful, you know, that's how powerful it was. Like Jesus is just too powerful. Not only that, but these pigs actually were owned by a farmer. 
and they were they they may have been part of another man's livelihood. And Jesus just destroyed another man's livelihood. Think about that. That's uh, get this man out of here, this Yeshua, this Jesus, before he destroys everything. Okay. Verse 18, as he as he was entering into the boat, he who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. He didn't allow him. And he said, go to your house, to your friends, and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. You need God's mercy if you want to be healed by such, such things. He went his way and began to proclaim in, De in Decapolis how Jesus had done great things for him and everyone marveled. Now, it, this is kind of interesting because this is one of the very rare, if not one of the only times that Jesus actually told someone to go tell other people what had happened. But Jesus knew this wasn't really his own area. This wasn't his own country or whatever. The, he, it, it's like he... It's almost like he didn't care what they knew about him because it didn't really affect him. You know, anyway, back in his own home, in his own area, Jesus, if they all knew uh, the great things that he did, he would be swamped with people. Verse 21, when Jesus had crossed over, crossed back over in the boat to the other side, a great multitude was gathered to him and he was by the sea. Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, or Yaira, that would be in, uh, in, the, in the Hebrew, came, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and begged him much, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her, that she may be made healthy and live. He went with him, and a great multitude followed him, and they pressed upon him on all sides. A certain woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things by many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse, having heard the things concerning Yeshua, came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. For he said, if I, if she, for she said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately the flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Now, this very well could have, could have been cancer. Immediately, Jesus, per, Jesus, perceiving in himself that, the, that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Now, we know in other, in other uh, Gospels, it talks about touching the hem of his garment or touching the, the hem, the tassel, hem, tassel. It actually is referring to the things that G, uh, Jews actually wear even to this day. These uh, long tassels that they wear on, on each side of their, there's like four of them that they wear uh, around their body, hanging down around their waist. And uh, they are tzitzit, which is uh, actually commanded that we uh, wear such things in the book of Numbers. And in the tzitzit, it's supposed to have a thread of blue. Today, the Jews do not have that. And that's another whole story why they don't have that. But it says in the Torah that you should have uh, you should wear a tzitzit with the thread of blue. And this particular thing actually represents the Torah. So you should do that to remind you to obey the commands of God. Even today, in synagogues, they they take the seat seat, they touch the seat seat, they kiss the seat seat, they touch the Torah, this kind of stuff. So it's a symbol of your honor and your respect for the commands of God. It's also a symbol of, of humility and, and repentance, that you are turning from your own ways, your own will, uh, not doing things your own way, not going by your commandments if they're you know i mean everybody has their own way to do, do things but but doing it god's way using god's commandments uh denying yourself and so when the woman came up behind him and touched his clothes like that it was more than just touching his clothes it was a it was an act of humility an act of honoring the commands of god honoring the torah showing uh respect to the torah to the commands of god and even today, uh, people, if you were to go, if you were to ask a rabbi, 
what does it mean to actually, what would, what would you think if, uh, if a woman came and uh, was in need of some prayer? Would it, well, what does it symbolize if, the, if she comes up to a rabbi and, and touches his seat seat? Okay, they would tell you. Verse 31, his disciples said to him, you see the multitude pressing you, pressing against you. And you say, who touched me? Can't you see there's like how many people touching you, Lord? He looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had been done to her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be cured of your disease. While he was still speaking, people came from the synagogue's ruler, synagogue ruler's house saying, your daughter is dead. Why bother the rabbi anymore? Why, why bother the teacher anymore? But Yeshua, when he heard the message spoken, immediately said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. He came to the synagogue ruler's house, and he, and he saw an uproar, weeping and great wailing. They all knew she was dead. When he had entered in, he said to them, Why do you make the, an uproar and weep? The, the child is not dead, but asleep. They ridiculed him. And they, and, and, but he, having put them all out, get out of here, kicked them out. Don't want the mockers, the ridiculers, the, the unbelievers in there. Get them out. Kick them out. Took the father of the child, her mother, and those who were with him and went in where the child was lying. Taking the child by the hand, he, he said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means, being interpreted, girl, I tell you, get up. Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years old. They were amazed with great amazement. He strictly ordered that, that, uh, them that no one should know this and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Again, as I always say, Jesus did not want attention uh, by this. He, did not, he didn't call... The, Everybody to the come forward to the platform and show every show the whole world what God has done through this ministry. He ordered them that they, that no one should know about it. That's humility. So may this uh, the reading of uh, this passage be a wonderful blessing to you, and um, I always pray that uh, you would be blessed with great spiritual revelation and enrichment. That God would open your eyes to see things you've never seen before. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about these videos. And uh, don't forget to, to uh, check back every single day. As, uh, as uh, by God's grace and God's will, I will have up new videos, new teachings every single day. So thanks again for watching and God bless you.